Praise the Lord. New year, hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to the new year in Jesus' name. And I pray that this new year will really be new. It will not look like the old year. That old year is gone. All the trouble of the past year gone. All those challenges of the last year gone. And all the harassment and all the problems and everything that you see, how am I going to get through? Thank God you got through. And I'm happy to see your face. Looks like a new face. A new person. A new future. A new family. The Lord do it in every life in Jesus' name. This year is going to be a glorious year. For me. I said for me. For you in Jesus' name. Once again, I welcome you and I want to tell you that the Lord is ready to bless everyone this year. And he's looking for number one. You'll be in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this new day. Thank you for this service. Thank you for this new year. Thank you for what you've started doing already in every life. Lord, we pray that this year will really be new for everyone in Jesus' name. The sicknesses of last year gone. Oppression of last year gone. Harassment of last year gone. And the failure, the defeat of last year gone in Jesus' name. Make this a new year for everyone. A year of serving the Lord. A year of great reward from heaven. And a year of impartation of the power of your spirit and the gifts in Jesus' name. Bless your people today. Bless them this week. Bless them this month. And bless them throughout the year in Jesus' name. And somebody shout. The Lord bless you richly. We're looking at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. As we enter the new year, he wants to remind us that because the mercies of the Lord are new every day and he showers his blessing upon us every day and he wants to do that throughout the year by the mercies of the Lord you then you are going to respond and you're going to reciprocate that now you are presenting your bodies are living sacrifice to God. You are presenting everything you've got, everything your body, your hands, your mouth, your eyes, your feet can do for the glory of God. You are presenting that afresh, anew, holy unto the Lord. You are presenting something to the Lord acceptable. Just like if, if somebody give you a gift. And you, you'll be looking forward to that gift. And you say, I'm going to get a gift. I'm going to get a gift. And eventually, it brings the thing. And the thing looks like peanut. It's like nothing. I say, is this what I was waiting for? Is this all I'm going to get? For you, it's unacceptable. The same thing as you come to the Lord this year. And you offer your body, your gifts, your talent, your service unto the Lord, God is not going to look at it and say, ah, is this all? Is this what you are going to offer? It's like peanut. This doesn't take any effort at all. This is all you are going to give me. It will not be so this year. It will be something acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. 
I'm sure you understand when it says be not conformed to this world it's talking about a reasonable service and it says do not be conformed to this world you sometimes you go to a restaurant and you want to eat and the people who are cooking back there and the people who are serving out here and the management who are on the top floor right there they're having problems together between themselves but you don't know about their problems you are not part of their problem you came to eat at the restaurant and then you sit down you make your order and as the food comes in even the attitude in which it is served you say what's the matter here even the way they put everything there as if they're not expecting anybody to come and eat in their restaurant well they know how to serve but because of the problem they are having with their management, because of the problem we are having with the cooks, and then they bring in the food, but God has not offended you. I say God has not offended you. Did you see that? It's a covenant-keeping God. Say, my God is a covenant-keeping God. And so when you come to serve in the church, when you come to serve the Almighty God with cheerfulness, with happiness, and you're offering your very best, and you're not doing like they're doing in the restaurants of the world, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our minds are renewed this year. Our lives are renewed this year. Our attitude in offering to the Lord is renewed this year in Jesus' name. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. And you younger people, you are going to run faster than your pastor this year in Jesus' name running the same race and running the same direction but while i'm picking my time and i'm you know patiently going on you, you know sometimes uh, i look at some people they say the pastor is slow this time i'll be slow don't you look up here and see how old the pastor is and so if he's slow and he's taking his time and he's watching his steps and you now that were passing the service to and then you say the pastor is slow i'm going to be slow the pastor is taking time i'm going to take time uh, uh, rise up and run somebody there i said rise up and run and be an encouragement to the people coming behind you that with your strength and your skill and your usefulness you're going to run in jesus name now i told you i was slowing down but now i'm getting new strength i'm getting new power and i'm going to be renewed you'll be surprised i'm going to run faster than I ever did in jesus name and if I am going to run faster, I pass it on to you. I said, I pass it on to you. You will work for the Lord. Hey, look at this. Look at verse 3. It says, For I say, I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that's among you. Look at that. The message of God comes to everyone. We cannot say, I'm a newcomer. I say to every man among you, everyone in the congregation, everyone in the assembly, the Lord is speaking to us and he says, I say, by the grace of God given to me, unto every man among you, look at this, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. What's that telling us? And let's come back to our Bible understanding. It's saying, let not Aaron think of himself more highly than he ought to think and think like I am Moses. No, you are not. Aaron, God said, he, Moses, will be like a God unto you and you will be his mouthpiece. Let not Aaron think of himself as Moses is telling us as we go back to the Bible, let not Korah, 
Dathan and Abiram think of themselves as if they were, they were Aaron. And then there is this competition. He did this, I must do that. No, he's saying, let not Philip think of himself as if he is Peter or John. Philip went to Samaria and then he did great exploits for the glory of God. And now Peter and John came. And you can see that there's a difference between Philip and Peter, Philip and John. With all the things that had happened in Samaria, there were things that had not happened. And so Philip, think about it today. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think as if you were Peter or John. Apollos, I know you're eloquent. Apollos, I know you're fervent and forceful. Let not Apollos think of himself as Aquila and Priscilla. They, those ones in the congregation, although they keep quiet and they're looking on, let not Apollo think of himself more highly than he ought to think. As if I cannot learn anything from Aquila and Priscilla, I'm eloquent, I'm forceful, I'm powerful, and this is what I can do. Silas, can I speak to you? Let not Silas think of himself as Paul. Yes, both of you can sing together. Paul and Silas sang. And then the foundations of the prison, the foundation was shaking. But all the same, Silas, let not anyone think of himself more highly than he ought to think. You see, your wristwatch, or maybe your phone, the watch or your phone, is as useful when it stays in its place. Look up here. I have a watch here, and it's good while it's at its place near me. If this watch could see the big bend that we have at the center of the town, and this watch here will say, I want to be there, I want to be there and is thinking of itself more highly than the other thing. And I said, okay, go ahead, and we lift it up, and lift it up, and lift it up, side by side with the big bang. We can't see it again. It's out of sight. It becomes useless because it's thinking of itself more highly. Come down. When you come down and you take your place, and you're not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to think, and you are humble, and you think of your value, and you keep to that value. This year, you're going to be useful. Yeah. It's telling us there should be no false superiority, no false attitude, no vain glory, no pride, and on the other hand, let not Paul think of himself lower than he ought to think and be like Silas. On the other hand, let not Moses think of himself lower than he ought to think and thinking like Aaron. He has a peculiar position, that Moses, and he has a peculiar a kind of transforming power, miracle working power in the land of Israel. Let not Moses have that false inferiority, humility, inferiority complex. I cannot, yes you can. I said yes I can. I said yes I can. I can do all things, all things as ordained for me to do. All things as a portion for me to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He will strengthen you this year in Jesus' name. But you know how he wants us to do it? He's giving us ministry. And he itemizes the ministries in chapter 12. And he tells us, look at verse 8. Verse 8, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it, number one, number one, number one, with simplicity. Be simple-hearted. Be simple-hearted. Don't be complicated. 
don't be difficult live a simple life a straightforward life the work he has given you to do concentrate on it and just simply it's not complicated with simplicity that's number one look at verse h there he that truly is tell me with diligence number two be diligent at it he's called you to serve this year and as we're serving him he says he's going to reward you and you do it number one with simplicity you do it number two with diligence look at that verse eight number three and he that shows mercy with cheerfulness cheerfulness remember the restaurant i was talking about you know you sit on the table and you put the food there's no smile on their faces and they are frowning they've never met you before and they're ministering to they want to serve you you even lose your appetite as you see the way they serve but it says when you're coming to serve the people of god we have some newcomers there they have heard about the covenant service of deeper life and they're coming with expectation and now you come to serve them don't frown don't do or see if there's something wrong. Don't do or see if you're carrying such a heavy load and then somebody is forcing you to come and do this. You do it with cheerfulness and the Lord will bless your ministry in Jesus' name. As he told us how to serve with simplicity, how to serve with diligence, how to serve with cheerfulness, then he tells us what not to do. Look at verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. As we serve the people, serve in love. Whatever the service may be, however small the service may be, however little space of time that service may occupy, you do it without dissimulation, without pretense, without hatred, without anything wrong at all. Look at verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another without competition without competition as if you know we go back to the restaurant and you're sitting there on the table the one that comes to serve the first cause he comes and serves or cheerfulness and the one that is bringing water or bringing orange juice or whatever a different person is not competing with the other one he serves with the same heart and even when they meet each other on the road they smile at each other and they greet each other as we serve this new year we're going to serve with cheerfulness somebody shout amen, amen. And we're going to serve with simplicity and we're going to serve also with uh, diligence in Jesus name without dissimulation without competition look at verse 16 be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate but not wise in your own conceit without self-conceit without ego without pumping yourself up like a balloon it's normal that you pump and pump get bigger and bigger watch it watch it that thing will blow up and you keep on pumping and pumping the balloon is destroyed because it thinks it can take more air than it should take and now it's gone as you pump up yourself no you will not i said you will not as they pump up themselves eventually they are blown up not was self conceit without self conceit look at verse 19 daily beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord without retaliation 
without retaliation. We want to serve the Lord. And this year, as we serve the Lord, we'll serve the Lord acceptably in Jesus' name. Did I lose my amen there? Yeah. Reading from Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 17. A God is a covenant-keeping God. And all the promises he has made unto us, as we serve the Lord this year, he will fulfill his promises in our lives in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 17. In verse 17, as I speak, by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we shall be saved from our enemies. This is the year. I said, this is your year. All those things that retarded your progress, beat your back, drove you back. There's a lion in the way. That lion is gone. Enemies are waiting in the way and I cannot go on. This year, you will go on. You must climb up you must succeed and all those enemies of the way the lord will clear them in jesus name to perform the mercy promise to our fathers to remember his holy covenant the oath which is swear to our father abraham that he will grant unto us unto me unto me that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies begin to rejoice begin to prepare for a greater year and for a higher year and to, for a prosperous year and for a spiritual life this year in jesus name anything and everything that should have held you back and you say i cannot climb all those things are taken up this year in jesus name that he will grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him how how i said how without fear you know if you are going to the exam hall and you're having fear that fear will knock off your brain you'll forget everything you wanted to write down but you'll go to your exam hall this year without fear if you're starting a project and you have all the wherewithals, everything you ought to have to finish that project. If fear comes in, you'll be trembling. Your knees will be shaking together. The hypertension you didn't have before will knock at the door and the door is open. Hypertension will enter in. Once fear enters, sickness and all those things will enter. This year, the door of your life is closed against fear. Yeah. You will walk without fear. Yeah. You go for your interview without fear. Yeah. You speak without fear. Yeah. You evangelize without fear. Yeah. That we might serve him without fear. Look at verse 75. In holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life last year the previous years if holiness was a tough doctrine holiness was difficult this year holiness made easy yeah. it will be like you are drinking water holiness it will be like you are eating what's your best food okay jollof rice it will be like you are eating your love fries. Holiness will be easy this year in Jesus' name. For me. I said for me. I see the excitement in your life this year is going to be better. I'm talking to you today on our new life and renewed service. 
before the covenant keeping God. Our new life and renewed service before the covenant keeping God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise. Number two, the privilege. Number three, the passion. The passion. This year you'll not be sluggish. You'll not be lukewarm. You'll not be dull. You'll not just be dragging your feet. There's going to be passion coming out of your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the promise of deliverance from all our foes, all our enemies. The promise of deliverance from all our foes. Number two, our privilege of sacrificial service without fear. Our privilege of sacrificial service without fear. Number three, our passion for holiness before the Heavenly Father. Our passion for holiness before the Heavenly Father. Number one, the promise of deliverance from all our foes, from all our enemies. Come back to Luke chapter 1 verse 74 Luke chapter 1 verse 74 that he will grant unto us the grant is given this year that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies delivered out of the hand of our enemies he made that promise many years ago and now you have come into the kingdom and that promise is to be fulfilled for you in his fullness every iota of fear every grain of fear every atom of fear every little fear every big fear he will deliver you from that in jesus name all those enemies will know they don't have any power over your life they tie the rope around your waist. You want to move on, they drag your back. That rope is shattered. <laughs> Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey my voice, Lord, I will obey. Lord, I will obey. If thou shalt indeed obey his voice and will do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. Amen. That's your amen. amen. I will be the almighty God said it will be an enemy to all your enemies amen. and an adversary to thine enemies adversaries look at verse 23 my angel shall go before thee as you are traveling from one place to the other the angel of the lord will go before you as some people are waiting on the road they were not waiting for you they're waiting for other people but uh, sometimes the people that run into uh, those people who are not uh, they're not waiting for you but this time uh, this year from today somebody help me shout today from today the angel of the lord will go before you i will clear the road before you and look at that verse 23 it says and bring you unto the amorites promised land to the hittites promised land to the Perizzites, promised land to the canaanites promised land to the hittites promised land to the jebusites and i will cut them off isn't this year good isn't this year going to be great it says i will cut them up cut them up cut them up thou shalt not bound down to their gods nor serve them nor do after their works but that shall surely overthrow them you will overthrow all the images and the idols of the occultic worshippers in jesus name 
and quite break down their images. This year, verse 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. Ye shall serve the Lord your God. Uh, you, you know, sometimes we don't understand how God works, but this year you will not miss your blessing. I was, you know, one of the few days I was, um, you know, walking along uh, the road. You know, people don't see me nowadays walking along like that, but you know, that time, not too long ago, I was walking along the road and I met somebody. And as he was coming, he was uh, smiling. And I was wondering, who is this person? And then when we met, he said, uh, good afternoon. So I said, good afternoon. How are you and who are you? He said, you may not know me. I was at the Bible study on Monday. I had a burden. I had an oppression. I had this terrible sickness. And that day you didn't even pray for us at the end of the Bible study. As you were teaching the Bible study like this, all my problems vanished away. You will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread. Amen. And bless your water. Amen. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The fibroid in your wife is gone. The tumor in your body is gone. And the sickness that is going to take millions of naira from you. You will enjoy the spending of your money. That sickness go in Jesus name. Serve the Lord, serve the Lord. And he says, as you serve the Lord, like that person that told me that it was just at the Bible study, as the word was coming forth, come to the Bible study this year. I said, come this year. Habit may hold you back. And your mind may hold you back. And because you've not been coming, you are not used to it, start something new this year. What you have not been doing before and the lord will start something new also in your life in jesus name verse 26 there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land the number of thy days I will fulfill the number of your days he will fulfill in Jesus name the promise of deliverance from all our foes look at Psalm 34 Psalm 34 I'm reading from verse 7 Psalm 34 we're reading in from verse 7 in verse 7 the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them and delivereth them no matter how many the enemies are how many they are the angel of the Lord encampeth round them that fear the Lord and delivereth them Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Who oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want, there is no lack, there is no scarcity, and there is no poverty, and there is no famine to them that fear him. You will have plenty this year. Abundance this year surplus this year the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but they that seek the Lord shall not want shall not lack any good thing <laughs> student what are you looking for even if other people don't get this year you'll get it in Jesus name <laughs> If you have already taken the exam and you have already done everything you ought to do, you go back home and relax, they will call your name. They will call your number. Do you believe? 
it is done in Jesus name come ye children hacking unto me I will teach you the fear of the Lord what man is he that desires life and love it many days that he may see good you will see good Amen. keep thy tongue from evil and thy leaves from speaking girl depart from evil do good seek peace and pursue it the eyes of the lord are upon the righteous any righteous person here today the eyes of the lord are upon you his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that will do evil. Anybody that will try to do evil against you, the face of the Lord will be against them. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears, and delivers, and delivers and delivers them out of out of out of troubles gone oppression gone dangers gone disaster gone destruction gone those bad dreams they are nullified the Lord is nice unto them that of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, tell me now, but, say it aloud, but, the Lord delivers him out of some of them out of them all i welcome you to this year of blessing psalm 81 psalm 81 i'm reading from verse 13 psalm 81 we're reading from verse 13 oh that my people had hearkened unto me oh that my people had listened to me oh that my people had obeyed my word and israel had walked in my ways i shall soon have subdued their enemies i should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries obedience to the lord brings us victory brings us dominion over all enemies and adversaries the haters of the lord should have submitted themselves unto him but their time should have endured forever he should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock what are you expecting out of the dry rock honey out of the rock shall i have satisfied thee satisfaction in your life yeah. fulfillment of the promise of god in your life deliverance from all your enemies in your life in jesus name now you can live your life without the fear of an enemy because they are all defeated i said they are all defeated jeremiah chapter 15 jeremiah chapter 15 we're reading from verse 20 jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20 and i will make thee unto this people a first brazen wall and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for i am with thee to save thee and to and to deliver thee says the lord i will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and i will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible you know there's somebody in that community is so bad they don't call him by his name they call him mr terrible 
Mr. Wickedness, Madam Wickedness, Madam Terrible. And people don't, they don't go near them. And any sin that, if they have any sin, and the man comes and says, hey, go out there, that land is mine. They run away from their land. Mr. Terrible takes the land this year. I said this year, yeah. your property, no Mr. Terrible will be strong enough to take it away from you. As you are coming like this, remember, remember, remember that this year, anywhere you are going, a mighty angel is going before you. The mighty power of the Lord is going before you. And before you get there, that angel will clear Mr. Terrible, Madam Terrell will clear them out of the way for you in Jesus' name. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Second Peter, Second Peter chapter 2. In Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Amen and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Now I'm going to show you threefold deliverance. Somebody say threefold deliverance. What are you going to have? I say, what are you going to have? If you say it for yourself, the Lord will do it threefold deliverance that the Lord is going to accomplish in your life and look at second Corinthians chapter 1 second Corinthians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 10 second Corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 10 who delivered us that's past tense past tense anything from the past that will spoil this year. God will deliver you from them. <laughs> Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death, the death that should have happened last year. And that death of last year, that problem of last year, saying, I am looking for my victim. Are you a victim there? I am looking for my victim and it's coming from the past. All the dangers of the past still running around looking for somebody in the new year. You are delivered in Jesus name. Look at the next part and does deliver present tense and does deliver every day you wake up and does deliver every week you spend this new year and does deliver past total deliverance present total deliverance look at the latter part here it says in whom we trust that you were yet i can't hear our people he will yet deliver us the future guaranteed Deliverance, threefold deliverance has come for you and you will enjoy it in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17 and verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. He will stand with you. Whether the members of the church are there or not, he will stand with you. Whether we are there or not, he will stand with you. And strengthen me that by me the preaching might be fully known, that all the Gentiles might hear. Look at this, look at this. And I, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Even if the lion has caught you, even if, and he's opened his mouth and you have entered in. Today, 
the Lord will pull you out. He, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And now look at the assurance I have for the new year. Verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And he will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To him my deliverer. To him my redeemer. To him my lord and master. To him my king. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You're delivered. You're set free. And all the plans of any enemy against your life this year totally cancelled in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something now. You know, this year I've been telling something, telling something. Are you ready for something? Yeah. Where the Congress, and there was a brother, actually a pastor, he couldn't come to the Congress. He was about to die. And he was there totally bedridden. And then at the Congress, I spoke about the omnipresence of God the omniscience of God and the omnipotence of God. And the brother was not there and he was about dying. And when we came back from the Congress, he sent to his pastor, that is to his own region overseer, and said, region overseer, I am dying. How am I going to do? I'm leaving my family. Everything is bleak and black. And the overseer took one message, the omnipotence of God, and sent it to him through his wife and said, my brother, listen to this. Just listen to this. I see your condition. I cannot say I want to go and pray. This one is beyond my level of prayer, but listen to this message. And the brother bedridden brought that message into his system and listened and listened and listened when it finishes it, it begins again when it finishes it begins again all of a sudden sickness went away yeah. all of a sudden the sentence of death was totally cancelled yeah. all of a sudden he was strong and he got up he's still alive today I told you that to tell you this, this message of today, get it. I said, get it. When the days are weary, when your life is weak, when the problems arise, when the ocean wants to sweep you away, don't cry, don't panic, put this message in your system you will get up yeah. you will overcome yeah. total deliverance will come to you from every enemy in Jesus name yeah. point number two our privilege of sacrificial service without fear our privilege of sacrificial service without fear we're looking at luke chapter one luke chapter one verse 74 in luke chapter one verse 74 that he will grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies what do we do might serve him without fear serve him without fear serve him without fear now you can rise up early in the morning and take that megaphone and all through that street declare that jesus is savior and jesus is lord no evil personality will meet you on the way now you can rise up in that bus and declare the gospel and make that to the passengers there the participant at the bus crusade and nobody will hurt you 
now without any fear you can tell members of, of your family this is the way they will listen to you they are going to be saved through you there is nothing to fear anymore in jesus name it says that we might serve him without fear you'll serve the lord without fear romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 15, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. There's no fear in your heart now. No fear in your mind. No fear in your system. Nothing will make you afraid. You will not be afraid of your wife now. You'll not be afraid of your husband. You'll not be afraid of your children. You'll not be afraid of your pastor. You'll not be afraid of anyone. Ah, they're afraid. Look at that verse 18 again. It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You see, fear brings us to bondage. Fear brings us to bondage. If you fear anything, if you fear anyone that binds you, it binds your mind. You cannot express yourself. It binds you. Even your appearance, you'll be looking down. And there's nothing you're looking down at. You're trying to avoid looking at the faces of the people because you're afraid. Fear binds and fear brings into bondage. You will not be in bondage. When God created you, he created you to have dominion. He created you to rise up and be somebody. And you will be that somebody in Jesus' name. All the ground you have lost, you will recover this year. What I mean by that is, let's say for the last 10 years, 20 years, you have been a Christian. And the things you should have done in that first year, you couldn't do because of fear. Second year, you couldn't do because of fear. Until this last year, your life, you are coward. You are bent down. You are bent low this year. Everything you should have done for those 20 years. Everything you should have done for those 10 years. The spirit of fear is gone now. God will bundle everything together. You'll be a super success. A super victor. A super conqueror. This year in Jesus name. Once the bondage is gone, the bondage of fear, and you rise up, the grace of God will multiply in your life. Year of achievement, year of glory, and year of power, and year of the supernatural in your life. It says, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one. I'm reading from verse six. Second Timothy chapter one. We're reading from verse six. It says, "Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, stir up." the gift of God, stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, is there. I said it's there, by the putting on of my hands, for God has not given us, tell me, it's a spirit, and it's a terrible spirit, the spirit of fear, all the other spirits who are thinking of, a demon there, a demon there, a demon there, a demon there. All of them put together. They cannot stop you. You will cast out demons. You will cast out evil spirits. The spirit of fear alone is able to do the damage that all the other spirits would have done. That's why this year you understand anywhere you go, anywhere you stand, the Lord has not given me 
say it for yourself. The Lord has not given you the spirit of fear. No spirit will stop you. It will be under your feet. Fear of poverty, spirit of poverty under your feet. Spirit of premature death under your feet. And the spirit of enemies are coming, his uh, forefathers, grandfather, and all that, all the spirit gone in Jesus' name. Your way is clear. Say, my way is clear. The Lord will go before you. He will clear the way before you. Behind you is watching. Around you is watching. While you're sleeping is watching. While you're awake is watching. He says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. If you claim any registered letter that you discovered already, the postman dropped it. And without remembering you know, that you ought to sign, maybe you even signed, and now it's dropped it for you, and you've taken it, and you look at the name behind the letter. Say, what? There's a mistake here. This is not mine. This is not my name. I'm talking about myself. I said, this is not my name. I said, this is not my name. This puzzle is not mine. Defeat, this puzzle is not mine. Poverty, this puzzle is not mine. Look at it, failure, this puzzle is not mine. Dejection, look at this, this puzzle is not mine. Depression, look at this, this puzzle is not mine. Fear, look at this, this puzzle is not mine. I will not open the letter that doesn't belong to me. I'll send them back to him. I said I'll send it back to them. I said I'll send it back to them. What God has not given you, don't accept. Don't acknowledge. Don't receive. Don't begin to fast and pray and say, this puzzle, this puzzle, uh -uh. look at the name behind it, it's not yours. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but what spirit do you have? But of power, but of love, and of a sound mind, spirit of suicide, go out in Jesus' name. You will not fear. I said you will not fear. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 1. Reading from verse 17. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17, Thou therefore get up thy loins. You know what that means? You wear your pair of trousers, and then the thing is loose. You've lost weight. And you can, if you're trying to walk like that, you'll not be able to walk proper. They'll think something is wrong with you. And then you put on the belt, tighten that belt. We're going on a journey. I said, tighten that belt. We're going on a journey. And as you put the belt there and tighten it up, everything is firm. Now you are ready. You are ready to move on into this new year as you tighten your belt and there's no fear, there's nothing, and the destiny and the destination is in front of you, and you say, I am getting there. Somebody, are you going to get there this year? Therefore, thou therefore get up thy loins and arise and speak unto all them that I command thee, be not dismayed at their faces. 
lest I confound thee before them. It says, if you act weak before them, then I'll make you weak. If you act fearful before them, I will confound you. I'll make you fearful. But if you know that the King of Kings has sent you, and the King of Kings is with you, and you tighten your belt, and you said, I am ready, the power of God will go with you. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the king of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Uh, you know, sometimes if somebody is fighting, like, you know, some of those people you see, um, maybe in the newspapers, they are boxers, they are wrestlers, they are fighting, they are fighting. Even after they have won, you look at them, you know they've been fighting. But you, all the fight of this year, a minute after that fight, as we look at you, we will not even know you've been fighting any battle you will be fresh yeah. you will be strong yeah. and then people look at you they say you know if i can be like brother so and so he doesn't have any problem praise the lord he doesn't have any problem she doesn't have any problem but you don't know it's just finished fighting a battle but he remains as fresh as ever I'm talking about somebody there as fresh as ever. I'm talking about somebody there is as fresh as ever. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee. The everlasting God says, I am with thee. The Almighty says, I am with thee. The one that never lost any battle says, I am with thee, says the Lord to deliver you. I am delivered. I said I am delivered. Number one, the promise of deliverance from all your foes, it's done. Number two, our privilege of sacrificial service without fear. You will serve the Lord. There will be no fear in your heart in Jesus' name. Number three, our passion for holiness. Our passion for holiness before the heavenly Father. We're coming back to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 74 and 75 that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him how without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life before him before the heavenly father as he sees that you are living the holy life, he'll be giving more grace, more strength, more assurance, more conviction, more gift. Everything you need to live upright. He'll not give you a large field to cut and not give you a sharp cutlass to do it a more to cut all the grass as he gives you the assignment he will give you the equipment if he wants you to remove a mountain he will give the equipment that is commensurable that he is fit that can do that work and remove that mountain if he gives you a field to clear he will give you the equipment to clear nothing if he wants you to wash something he'll give you the washing machine that will do it very perfectly and you will not be struggling and sweating this year you will live in righteousness
and you will live in holiness before him before him before him that means in his sight and while he looks at you and he sees you don't have enough power enough strength enough ability because you're doing it before him he'll supply what you don't have are you going to live a righteous life and a holy life this year in jesus name uh, let's look at first thessalonians chapter 4. first thessalonians chapter 4 i read from verse 7. first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 for god has not called us unto uncleanness but tell me unto holiness do you remember when you started work in that school you did the interview and they called you and they said this is your class that we are going to teach but you know they provided the textbook they provided the master workbook they provided all that you need the chalkboard and the chalk and you know everything that they use nowadays in the class they didn't leave that in your hand they give you the calling and as they give you the calling they also give you the instrument and the equipment the lord has called us to holiness this year everything we need they will supply you will not go in your own strength you will not go in your own power you are going to be holy in jesus name now obadiah chapter one obadiah chapter one obadiah chapter one and here we're reading from verse 17 obadiah chapter one we're reading from verse 17. This year, you will possess. I said this year, I will possess. You will be holy. I will be holy. We shall be holy. In the public, we shall be holy. In the office, we shall be holy. In the church, we shall be holy. Obadiah, are you there now? Have you got Obadiah? Chapter 1, verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. That's why you came today. You've got deliverance already. And there shall be holiness. Look at that brother. You'll see holiness in his life. Look at that sister. You'll see holiness in her life. There shall be holiness. Somebody say it aloud. There shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess, shall possess, shall possess. Where are the possessors today? Where are the partakers today? Possess in Jesus' name. You have passion to achieve, you are going to achieve. You have passion to conquer, you are going to conquer. Every enemy will fall before you in Jesus' name. The promise of deliverance is yours. The privilege of service is yours. And the passion for holiness and the power for holiness is yours in Jesus' name. Rise up and possess. Rise up and possess. Rise up and possess. It's the new year. It's your year. It's a new era. And it's your era. It's the new dawn. And it's your dawn. And it's for you to possess. There'll be deliverance. There'll be holiness. And the people of God shall possess their possession. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Amen. Can I hear New Year? Amen. We bless God for today being the first Sunday service for the year. Today also being the first week of the year and first month of the year 2022. 
and we bless God for the word of God we have received this morning, which is titled Our New Life and Renewed Service Before the Covenant Keeping God. Remember, this month is a covenant month. We want to appreciate God. We want to thank God now and honor him for bringing us into the new year. Let's thank God for a new year of faith. New year with a new blessing, new focus, with a new provisions, new privileges. Let's appreciate God. Let's honor him this moment. It's a moment we bless God. We are having a new family. We are also having a new future and a new faith. Let's honor him and appreciate him. Remember in the message, the Lord has used our Father in the Lord to open our eyes and to reveal the plan and purpose of God for this year. We are to renew our love, renew our service. We are to renew our focus, renew our ministry. That's why we need to bless him this moment. Remember we read, he read with us and taught us in Romans chapter 12, there is a time we present our bodies, presenting ourselves unto the Lord. So church, we need to pray. We need to talk to God today, being the first Sunday service, being the first covenant service. We need to tell God that we'll serve him in a proper way this year. Remember we had that serving the Lord, we are to serve him with simplicity. We are to serve him with diligence. We are to also serve him with cheerfulness. Let's pray now and say, Lord, help me to serve you in simplicity. Help me this year to serve you with diligence. To serve you also with cheerfulness. Pray that there will be joy for service. I believe you are praying. I know you are talking to God today. It's an opportunity we have received from the Lord to pray in this new year. We were told also what not to do in serving the Lord. We are to, not to serve the Lord with dissimulation. That was what we saw there. We need to pray and say, Lord, help me. Anything that causes division, that causes division and confusion, take it away in my life, take it away in our means, and take it away in the church. We were told to not to serve the Lord with our serving the Lord, not to be with competition as the Lord that will not be competing with one another. God has given us different gifts, different calling, different ministry, so there is no base for competing with one another. Pray, we are to serve also without self concept Ask the Lord to help you. We are to serve him also without retaliation. That's a message for you and for me this year. Let's pray that serving the Lord will be with renewed vigor. Renew grace, renew power, a renew opportunity. We had in point one the promise of deliverance from all our foes, all our enemies. There is promise of deliverance. Pray this day and say, Lord, from today and throughout this month, throughout the year, will enjoy those promised deliverance. No enemy will stand our way. No power of the enemy will resist the power of the Lord promise us this day. As the Lord this moment, I say, Lord, help me. It's a year of deliverance. We had about threefold deliverances. And what are the threefold? There is past deliverance. The Lord that delivered us in time past, in the old years, 
God has been delivering. We saw it in the global program crusade. We have been seeing deliverances. Testimony comes in everywhere. Let's bless God for his past deliverances. There is also thus delivering. Means present deliverance. As the Lord, whosoever in any cage, in any bondage, in any fear, is a moment to pray that the Lord will deliver his own at the present. Do you know there is future deliverance? Who will yet deliver us? As the Lord has said, Lord, we will enjoy all these threefold de deliverances. It's time to talk to the Lord of glory. He is hearing your prayers. He is here to answer our prayers. So we need to pray. Ask the Lord for his grace. Ask him for his support. Ask him. Pray that the angels of God will be in ministration this year for us. The ministering angels. They will be here for you. They will be around all over us. As the Lord has promised. Remember, we have our privilege of sacrificial service without fear. We were told very well the problems of fear. When you have fear, fear obstructs everything about you. Fears weaken you. Fears makes you to forget God. Pray that that spirit of fear which God has not given us, pray and let it not be part of your life. Let it not be part of your service. But God has given us a good spirit. Spirit of adoption. Spirit of power. Spirit of faith. Spirit of mind and spirit of sound mind. Ask the Lord and say, Lord, give me that spirit of power. Give me that spirit of faith. Give me that spirit of sound mind and spirit of love to serve you better this year. Pray now. Church, I believe you are praying. I know you are praying. Can I hear you? Amen. Can I hear you say, New Year, Amen. Amen. We want to pray again that the third thing we were told about our passion for holiness before the heavenly father. God is watching now. He wants to see those that love holiness, those that have passion for holiness. Let's pray. This year will be year of holiness. Year to be in the image of the Lord. To be in his likeness. To be like him. That should be your prayer. Pray now. And say, Lord, make me holy. Help me to be more holy. To be more righteous. To be truthful to holiness. So that it can be seen in our lives. Let the holiness be seen in our families. Let it be seen in our relationship with one another. Let it be seen in our zeal. Pray and say, Lord, there will be passion for holiness before you as our heavenly father. You are talking to God. He is listening to our prayers. Pray and say, Lord, you will fulfill your will in our lives this year. We will serve you in holiness. We will offer living and holy sacrifice, which will be acceptable unto God. Let's now pray for our Father in the Lord. The Jesus, whom the Lord is using globally and for the church in particular. The Lord is using him. I've been using him in a mighty way. This is a new year. We need to pray for new vigor, for new grace, for new strength, new vision, and empowering anointing. Let's talk to the Lord and say, Lord, there is much to be done. Double to him. Double your grace. Double your vision. Double the strength. Double the well-being so that he can do more for you. And we also, we are joining for this work. All of us need to pray and say, Lord, strengthen your servant. Quicken your servant. Uphold your servant. Reveal more of yourself to him 
so that you give more and more to us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can I hear another amen? Another new year, amen. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for being the first service, which is a covenant service. The first week of the year, oh Lord, and the first month of the year, you brought your people together to come and hear your word. We bless and worship you, Lord, for what you have revealed unto us today. Lord of glory, it's our prayer now that all the promises you have given unto us, promise of deliverance, oh Lord of heaven, help us. You have done it before. You will do it much more in our land, in the world, all over the globe. There will be testimonies of powerful deliverances in Jesus' name. All those that you said you are going to deliver from terrible men and women, from evil, from calamities, from wicked men and wicked women, will enjoy that deliverance everywhere in Jesus' name. You have given us privilege of serving you. Lord of glory, this privilege this year will be much more deeper, greater, and stronger so that we give our best unto your service as we present our bodies, our hands, our eyes, our brain, our leg, our thought, our talent, our time, and treasures. We hand them over for your service. Lord, Take over everything about us to your glory in Jesus' name. Lord, it's our prayer. You will give your church the passion for holiness, genuine holiness, biblical holiness that will bring fruit in our service and in our life. Help your church. Build up your people to live for you and accomplish your purpose this year in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. We appreciate you for hearing our prayers. We bless you and honor you for the period ahead, program ahead of us, who have testimony to share all the time. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Lastly, bigger and final, amen. Amen.